there. This is Megan here with Core 3 Harmony and Wellness Services. It is so good to see each and every one of you, to have you here if you're listening in right now at this moment. I appreciate it. Thanks for bearing with me with all of the, the craziness. Uh, yesterday, I normally try to go live on Monday and things were not happening for me. So I want to dive right in before I do so. First and foremost, thank you to all of all of you who are subscribers. You are greatly appreciated. Um, if you're not a subscriber, please do so. We want to inform you that our content, we strive on keeping it informative, uplifting, and inspiring. And so with that, today we're going to be talking about some amazing Black pioneers within the mental health profession. And this information um, that I'm sharing with you today is from the Mental Health of America Institute. <clears throat> and I meant to, to have this kind of uh, taper off what is known as in, in the month of February in the United States, Black History Month didn't happen. But do know that we can honor and celebrate our history any time of the year, 24-7, <laughs> 365 days of the year. So thank you so much for those of you who are subscribers. Appreciate it if you would subscribe and also give us a, a, an amazing offering of a thumbs up. We would greatly appreciate it. Here at Core 3 Harmony and Wellness Services, we provide services in three areas, music therapy, counseling, and coaching. We provide services in person if you happen to be close to our office location, as well as remotely. So please reach out to us. We do offer a consultation on our services. It helps us to learn a little bit more about what um, brings you um, to needing so some some so ah some support. <laughs> Hard to get the S words out, as well as it gives you an opportunity to see um, if we are a good fit for your needs. So with all of that being said, I'm going to attempt to share my screen. I put together a nice presentation and let me get that there. Okay. So let me do something really quick and let me make sure my PowerPoint is ready to go. And let me go back and see if I can share my screen. Thank you so much for your patience. I greatly appreciate it. Um, let me see here. Where are you? All right. Let me find here. Let me click on it. There we go. Okay, it takes a little minute. We've got it. Okay, let's see if we can share. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Hold on, we're running into some running into some challenges. One moment, please. Uh let's try this for a second. All right, in the meantime, um if you have any questions or any ideas as far as um, topics you would like us to discuss, uh, we would love to hear from you. Um, everything that you need can be found down in the description box. Okay. Oh boy, sorry everyone. <laughs> We're running into some challenges here. Uh, bear with me. Uh, if there's anyone in the chat, I'm gonna be trying to also check that as well. Um, yes. I'm just wondering, I might not be able to share my screen today. I'm bummed out. I've got a beautiful presentation for you here. Let me see uh, what I can do. Um, I'll just have to, I wanted to show pictures because um, I know pictures can be 
let me just go here. Let me pull up the website. One moment as you bear with me. Uh, and I'll have to troubleshoot that later. You guys know on the internet with once you get used to where things are and how to navigate things, um, you get comfortable with that. And then all of a sudden, something comes up <laughs> and things get changed without your notice. You're like, ah, I used to be able to find this and this and that, and now it's not here. So let me pull up this site because I think the big thing for me is to actually show you pictures of the individuals I'm going to be uh, discussing. And so, go. Okay, so let me see if this will work. I'm going to be showing you this here. Um, okay, hopefully you can see this now. I want to enhance because I really want to focus on... Um, if I can here, I really want to focus on the pictures of the, of the individuals. So I want to make sure you can see them. Okay, so hopefully you are able to see my screen. Let's see. Um, I want to first and foremost, I'm going to start so that you can understand what you're seeing here. Let me make sure this shared. I don't see it. Let's see. Share. Uh, here we go. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start with the individual here to uh, the left side. Um, and this is B.B. Uh, Moore Campbell. And I'm going to just kind of read what it what it has here uh, on the, the site, the information specifically about her. Uh, B.B. Moore Campbell was, was an American author, journalist, and teacher and mental health advocate who worked tires, tirelessly to shed light on the mental health needs of the Black community and those in underpressed under areas. She founded the NAMI Inglewood in... NAMI in Inglewood. <laughs> Sorry, my brain is running ahead of my lips right now. Um, to create a safe space for Black people to talk about their mental health concerns. Um, throughout her time as an advocate, Ms. Campbell made her way to D.C. And on January 2nd of 2008, Congress formally recognized Ms. Campbell um, in the National Minority Mental Health Awareness Month, bringing awareness to the unique struggles of those underrepresented groups who are facing mental illness in the United States. Next, this picture here, I'm gonna focus on. Um, this is Dr. Herman George Kennedy. And he was a prominent black clinical, clinical social psychologist. Uh, he's credited with being the first psychologist to study the influence of rapport between an IQ test proctor and the subjects, specifically researching how race of a test proctor can create bias in IQ testing. He's also helped to provide an understanding in testing environments that were suitable to help black students succeed. Okay, so that is Dr. Herman George Kennedy. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and move the screen to here. I'm going to enhance a little bit because I want to focus on the images of the individuals we're discussing. So hopefully that can help you see a little bit better. Here we have, um, as you can see, we have Dr. Childs. Um, Dr. Dr. Childs in 1969 uh, helped to found the Association for Women in Psychology. Uh, she's also the founding member of Chicago's Gay Liberation Front, in addition to being a leader for women in psychology and the LGBTQ plus community. 
She also owned her own practice in which she provided therapy to LGBT, LGBTQ plus folks, people living with HIV and AIDS and other marginalized members in her community. She practiced feminist therapy and centered her research and work around the experiences of black women and feminist theory. So that is Dr. Childs. And that's in the image that you are seeing to your left. Now we're going to focus on the image. You are seeing a black and white photo um, to, to your right of the screen. So did, this is Dr. Mr. and Mrs. Clark, husband and wife. Um, wife, Mammy Phillips Clark, was the first African-American woman to earn her doctoral degree in psychology from Columbia University. She previously earned both her bachelor's and master's degree from Howard University. Her experience in college, specifically graduate level courses, helped her realize the shortage of psychological services available to the African-American community and other minorities. The Clarks are best known for their the famous doll study in which more than 200 black children participated. Both Mammy and Kenneth Clark worked on this study providing invaluable evidence in favor of ending school segregation in Supreme Court in the Supreme Court case Brown versus the Board of Education citing that school segre segregation was psychologically harmful to black children. Dr. Kenneth Clark was the first ever black president of the American Psychological Association. Dr. Mammy Phillips uh, Clark's dedication and passion for adequate mental health services for all promoted Dr. Clark to open her own agency to provide comprehensive psychological services to the poor, for to blacks, and to other minority children and families. In February of 1946, Dr. Clark and her husband opened the doors of what's called the Northside Center for Child Development for those in the Harlem area. She worked in the center counseling and providing other psychological services from 1946 until 1979. When she retired, although she retired, um, Dr. Mammy. Phipps Clark served on different advisory boards and was still active within her community. Isn't this amazing? This is stuff that I know even in school today, there's not an actual focus um, in a particular curriculum I, I am in on specifically uh, minorities who have really uh, pressed for the mark within the psychology field and arena. So I, I, I hope that you're finding this very informative and it will inspire you to go dig and do some research and get some background on these individuals mentioned. Okay, we're moving right along. We're gonna stop right here with you, these two fellas. Let's move it up a little bit and hopefully you can see. Let's see how it looks on the screen. Okay, hopefully you can see these two. Okay, so again, we're gonna start with the image that is right there to your, to your left. This is Dr. James P. Comer. And he is the Maurice Falk Professor of Child Psychiatry, Child Psychiatry at the Yale University of Medicine's Child Study Center in New Haven, Connecticut. He is known nationally and internationally for his Cre creation of the Comer School Development Program in 1968 within internationally, within Yale University School of Medicine, Dr. Comer focused his career in improving school restructuring and has been featured in numerous newspaper magazines and television reports, while also having several articles published in academic journals as he's co-founder and past president of the Black Psychiatrists of America. Dr. Comer is a recipient of countless recognitions and holds over 48 honorary degrees. Woo wee! <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. In 2014, Dr. Comer received a prestigious nomination by President Barack Obama to serve on the President's Commission on Educational Excellence for African Americans. 
Wow. Just when you think uh, one degree is enough, uh, clearly that I think that's the highest number I have ever heard of, of a number of degrees I've ever heard someone obtaining or having. 48. Woo. Okay. Now we're going to look to the picture to your right, the black and white photo. This is Dr. Paul Berto Corneli. Uh, Dr. Corneli was a founder of the National Student Health Association in 1939, president of the Physicians Forum in 1954, and founder and pr first president of the District of Columbia Public Health Association in 1962. Dr. Corneli was also the first African-American elected as the president of the American Public Health Association in 1968. Dr. Cornelli's professional work focused on the development of public health initiatives aimed at reducing health care disparities among the chronically underserved. He also made significant contributions in the civil rights movement through his efforts to de desegregate health facilities across the U.S. Additionally, Dr. Cornelli conducted research studies in tuberculosis venereal disease, scar and scarlet fever, utilizations of physicians, extenders, and its effect on the cost of quality of health care and the effects of social and cultural factors on health and health care utilization. He published over 100 scientific and popular articles. Dr. Corneli retired in 1973 as professor emeritus in the Department of Community Health and family practice of Howard University College and Medicine. All right. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me. Next we have, okay, let me see how well you can see this. All right, we have Dr. Jennifer Eberhardt. We're gonna look at um, her, her life contributions. That's the picture that you are seeing there to your left. Uh, Dr. Eberhard is an esteemed professor of psychology at Stanford University. She is an expert on the, the consequences of psychological association between race and crime and has done extensive research on the topics of implicit bias, criminal justice, and the education system. And her work has provided the evidence needed to educate law enforcement officers in implicit bias training. In 2014, Dr. Eberhardt's work earned her the famous MacArthur Genius Grant Fellowship. Next, we are going to be looking at Dr. Elders. The photo is, is there adjacent to your right. Dr. Elders was the first African-American and the second woman to be sworn, at, sworn in as the Surgeon General of the United States. During her tenure as Surgeon General, Dr. Elders advocated for universal health coverage, comprehensive health education, including sex education in schools. Unfortunately, Dr. Elders only held the position of Surgeon General for 15 months as she was asked to resign. Nevertheless, this does not diminish her accomplishments, including the fact that Dr. Elders was the first person in the state of Arkansas to become a board certified pediatric endocrinologist, conducted an extensive amount of research on growth and diabetes in youth, as well as issues related to teen pregnancy and congenital abnormalities. Additional efforts by Dr. Elders included her extensive work to address minority health issues, particularly when she was appointed by then Governor Clinton to head the Arkansas Department of Health, where she focused her efforts on improving minority health, which led her to establish an internal office of minority health within the Arkansas Department of Health. Currently, Dr. Elders is a professor emeritus at the University of Arkansas in medical sciences. All right. Thank you all. You guys are doing so well. <laughs> okay. We're moving along to these two individuals here. Okay. Here we have Dr. Solomon Carter Fuller. We will start with him first and then move over to learn more about Dr. Green. Dr. Fuller uh, was, was a pioneering African-American psychiatrist who made significant contributions to the study of Alzheimer's disease. He was born in Liberia, the son of a previously enslaved African who had purchased his freedom and immigrated there. He graduated from Boston University School of Medicine, 
which was a homeopathic institution. It was open to both African-American and women students. He spent most of, most of his career practicing at Westboro State Mental Hospital in Westboro, Massachusetts. While there, he performed his groundbreaking research on the physical changes of the brains of Alzheimer patients. Dr. Fuller was one of the first black psychiatrists and worked alongside Dr. Elios Alzheimer, who first discovered the trace of Alzheimer's disease in 1901. Wow. Amazing, amazing history. I, I am just, I'm just in awe and I am so appreciative and reflect on just learning and knowing more about the pioneers who really pressed their way into the field of psychiatry. Let's keep going. We have a few more. Dr. Green, uh, this is the picture there we're looking at to the right. Dr. Green is the author of the landmark article, When the Therapist is White and the Patient is Black. Considerations for Psychotherapy in the Feminist, Heterosexual, and Lesbian Communities. She is a pioneer of intersectional psychology, and her work on heterosexism, sexism, and racism has illuminated how different intersecting facets of a person's identity shape their experiences of privilege, oppression, and mental health. Dr. Green's work earned her the honor of the Distinguished Pub Publication Award from the Association for Women in Psychology in 2008. I hope you're finding this intriguing as we learn about some of the amazing pioneers in the mental health field. Okay, we're gonna be talking about Dr. Landron. Dr. Hope Landron was an expert in health psychology and public health. In 1992, she was published The Politics of Madness, which presented her research on the presence of existing social inequities in the diagnosis and categorization of psychiatric disorders. This was some of the first scientific data that showed that stereotypes of women, people living in poverty, and racial and ethnic minorities were likely affecting psychiatric diagnosis and helping to maintain the inequities already present in society. Dr. Landron frequently applied a public health lens to psychology and psychiatry and argued that the field of psychology's focus on decontextualized individuals is sufficient for understanding overall health. Next, we will take a look at Dr. Lewis Hall. Dr. Frida Lewis Hall earned her bachelor's degree from Johns Hopkins University and her medical doctorate from Howard University in Washington, DC. She served as Pfizer's, and Pfizer's chief medical officer and executive president until the end of 2018, and as a chief patient officer and executive vice president during 2019. Trained as a psychiatrist, Dr. Lewis Hall has held an array of leadership roles across the healthcare and pharmaceutical sectors, as well as in academia, medical science, and directive service provision. In 2010, Dr. Lewis Hall was appointed by the Obama administration to the inaugural Board of Governors for the Patient-Centered Outcome Research Institute. And in 2012, she was appointed chair of the Cures Acceleration Network Review Board and a member of the National Center for Advancing Translational Sciences Advisory Council of the National Institute of Health. She also serves on the Executive Committee of the Clinical Trials Transformation Initiative and on numerous other boards, including those of Harvard Medical School, the Institute of Medicine's Forum on Drug Discovery, Development and Translation, and Save the Children. Whew. Miss Lewis Hall is one busy woman. <laughs> Okay, Dr. Lewis Hall has received several recognitions, including being named as one of Savoy's top influential women in corporate America in 2012, named Woman of the Year by Healthcare Business Women's Associations in 2011, as well as being recognized in 2012 as one of the nation's 75 most powerful women in business by Black Enterprise Magazine 
and among the 25 most influential African Americans in healthcare by Black Health Magazine. Go ahead on, Miss Dr. Lewis Hall. Mm. And the, these are some very challenging, difficult words <laughs> in describing some of these folks' accomplishments. So I'm noticing, along with talking a bit this morning, my throat is getting very dry. So <clears throat> excuse me if I'm a little raspy. Okay, we are moving on now. Two black and white photos. So let me see how well you can see this. Okay, so you can see the names. Perfect. Dr. Maxi Clarence Maltalsby. And we will look at Dr. Harriet McAdoo. McAdoo? I, I apologize for any names that I am not pronouncing correctly. Okay, Dr. Matalsby was the founder of the psychotherapeutic method, rational behavioral therapy. Through his work in therapeutic method, Dr. Maltzby, I believe that's the correct word. <laughs> Dr. Maltzby explored emotional and behavioral self-management. Dr. Maltzby's unique contributions include making emotional self-help a legitimate focus of scientific research and clinical use. Through rational behavioral therapy, he formulated a comprehensive system of cognitive behavioral psychotherapy and counseling that incorporated in a clinically useful way the most recent neuropsychological facts about how the brain works in relation to emotional and behavioral self-control. The technique of cognitive behavioral therapy and counseling that Dr. Maltzby created is the first comprehensive yet short-term culture and drug-free technique of psychotherapy that produces long-term therapeutic results. In addition to authoring books for mental health professional therapists and counselors, Dr. Maltzby has written four pioneering books that describe his method of emotional self-help called rational self-counseling. Now we're gonna take a look at Dr. Harriet McAdoo. Uh, Harriet Pipes McAdoo worked with her husband, researcher John Lewis McAdoo on the Family Life Project which studied black families in the Washington DC area. With a focus on the medical middle class, excuse me, rather than the working class and those living below the poverty line. Her research was some of the first work that challenged the widely held harmful racial stereotypes held by black families. Uh, Ms. McAdoo's work on the Family Life Project earned her a spot in the White House Conference on Families appointed by then President Jimmy Carter. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing, amazing individuals. Okay. We will start with Miss Kinney, Miss Jackie Kinney there. Miss Kinney was a survivor of trauma, addiction, homelessness, and psychiatric and criminal justice system. She was a family advocate specializing in issues affecting African American women and their children, and is a founding member of the National People of Color Consumer Survivor Network. Ms. Kinney was a consultant and advisor to the Center for Mental Health Services and is well known for her moving presentations on the national audiences on issues such as seclusion and restrainment, intergenerational family support, and minority issues in public mental health. Additionally, Ms. Kinney was a proud recipient of the Mental Health America's highest honor, the Clifford W. Beers Award, presented to a consumer of mental health and or substance abuse services who best reflects the example set by Beers in his efforts to improve conditions for and attitudes toward people with mental illness. She was also the recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration Voices Award Program and was presented and which was presented to her for her distinguished leadership and advocacy on behalf of trauma survivors. 
Now we're going to take a look at the life of Dr. Linda James Myers. That is the photo we're, we're looking at there to your right. Dr. Myers specializes in psychology and culture, moral and spiritual identity development, healing practices, and psychotherapeutic processes, and intersections of race, gender, and class. Internationally known for her work in the development of theory of optimal psychology, Dr. Myers has conducted trainings in England, South Africa, Ghana, and Jamaica. She's the author of numerous articles, book chapters, and five books, including Understanding of Understanding an Afrocentric Worldview, Introduction to an Optimal Psychology, and most recently co-editor of Recentering Culture and Knowledge in Conflict Resolution Practice. Dr. James Myers' oneness model of human functioning offers a transdisciplinary focus that builds on sites, insights from the wisdom and tradition of African deep thought and converges with modern physics and European philosophies and Eastern philosophies. Her current research interests comprise the application of the model of broad range issues from health and education to business ethics. Um, Dr. James Myers has received numerous honors and awards for excellence in research scholarship, including being named the Distinguished Psychologist by the Association of Black Psychologists, the Bethune Woodson Award for Outstanding Contributions in the Development of Promotion of Black Studies from the National Council of Black Studies, the Ani Award by the International Black Women's Congress, and the Building to Eternity Award from the Association for the Study of Classical African Civilization, among others. Woo! Professor James Myers is a recipient of the OSU College of Arts and Sciences Outstanding Teacher Award. She's also a National Honor Society's member of Phi Kappa Phi, and a past president of the Association of Black Psychologists. Wow. Go ahead on, Miss Linda James Myers. Wonderful. Okay, we're getting ready to wrap it up. Thank you so much for continuing to hang in there with me, okay? Let's see how well you can see me. See, great. Okay, so we're going to be looking at Dr. Inez Beverly Foster. Uh, she's considered to be the first Black woman to earn a PhD in psychology. Her dissertation, The Non-Academic Development of Negro Children in Mixed and Segregated Schools, evaluated the effects of racial inequality and racism on the development of Black children's identity and mental health. Her research and arguments helped lead some of the first discussions about desegregating American schools. Wow, that's amazing. I want to share again, these are names that um, need to be heard more in our field of psychology, for sure. And I'm for anyone that happens to come across this clip and listen in, I, I really appreciate it. And I, do encourage you. I definitely encourage you to um, dive in more with these individuals and learn of their works and track down um, their research and their writings and their books and, and do read them. And give them some time and consideration for them being the pioneers that they were at their time and are in the field of psychology and mental health. Okay. All right. You have the photo there next to you. This is Dr. Francis Cecil Sumner. Uh, Dr. Sumner is another person who gets called the father of Black psychology because he was the first Black man to earn his PhD in psychology. Dr. Sumner was accepted into Clark University's doctoral psychology program, but was then drafted to serve in World War I. Upon his return, he re-enrolled and his dissertation was accepted. Dr. Sumner struggled to get his research published because of the color of his skin, but persisted nonetheless and was able to publish several articles. He is also one of the founding members of the Howard University Psychology Department. Oh, amazing. 
these individuals, each and every one. Dr. Tatum. Dr. Tatum is the author of the renowned book, Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria and the Other Conversations About Race. One of her many works that focuses on racism and the effect it has on the American education system. She argues that the effects of racism, especially in schools, have a detrimental effect on students' racial identity, formation, and emphasizes the urgent need for continued conversations about race. Beverly Tatum's tireless work on racism, psychology, and the education system earned her the American Psychological Association Award for Outstanding Lifetime Contribution to Psychology in 2014. Next. Robert Lee Williams was the creator of the Black Intelligence Test of Cultural Homogeneity, an intelligence test specifically oriented towards Black experiences, language, and culture. The data collected from this test helped to shatter the notion that Black people had lower, I, lower average intelligence than white people and showed rather that differences in previous IQ data were likely to result of speech and experiential differences skewing IQ test results in favor of white people. He was also a founding member of the National Association of Black Psychologists and served as the second president of the organization. Oh, my friends, and last but not least, we will be taking a look at Dr. Joseph Dr. Joseph White, sometimes referred to as the father of black psychology, wrote the groundbreaking, groundbreaking article Toward a Black Psychology, which is credited as being the first ever strengths-based rather than deficit-based evaluation and description of black behavior and culture. He passionately advocated for the creation of black psychology arguing that applying white psychology to black people often unfairly created the illusion of black inferiority when ultimately it was a reflection of the culturally irrelevant psychological principles being applied. He also helped found the Association of Black Psychologists as well as the Black Studies Program at San Francisco State University. So that my friends, is a look at some amazing black pioneers within the field of mental health. I appreciate you and thank you so very much for your time. I hope that you learn quite a bit today and there are some names that um, may perhaps be new to you. And I wanna encourage you to dive deep into that area. And if you are a part of a, a educational program yourself and you're working on your degree in psychology of some sort and you're noticing perhaps maybe a lack of studies and look at pioneers from a variety of different cultural backgrounds do bring that forward and implement that and try to um do your own research and bring that that topic into the discussion of your class or of your courses very interesting. I, I am so grateful for, for each one of these individuals that were mentioned today. Um, helped to pave the way, of course, uh, to, to where I am and, um, and my love and study of psychology and counseling. And so I hope that you have found this enlightening, inspiring, and uplifting. Um, before we get ready to go, thank you once again so very much. You guys know that I am always sending out nothing but good vibes your way. Oh, setting out major intentions of hope and love and peace and clarity to each and every one of you. Please know these three things that you matter, you are worthy and you are oh so loved. Thank you so much for your time. This is Megan here with Core 3 Harmony and Wellness Services. I'm looking forward to speaking with you again next week where we will dive into building up your self-esteem and self-confidence. Thank you so very much. Please subscribe if you're not a subscriber.